We meet again, fellow travelers. Today we shall discuss one of the most turbulent regions in all of Westeros. As the undisputed war capital of the continent, the Riverlands is a region where history flows as swiftly as the rivers that cross it. Situated in the heart of Westeros, the Riverlands has always played a central role in the political and military landscape of the continent. We shall start by delving into the rich history and geographical significance of this region. So let us begin. The Riverlands is a vast and fertile expanse, bordered by the Neck in the north, the Vale in the east, and the Blackwater to the south. This region is defined by the River Trident and its three great branches. These waterways not only provide fertile land for agriculture, but also serve as essential trade routes and strategic assets. The river's three branches act as both highways during peace and barriers during war, a fact that has shaped the very history of the region and its inhabitants. Despite their importance, the Riverlands have never seen the rise of a major city, largely due to the region's fractious history and the reluctance of past kings to grant charters that would allow cities like Saltpans, Lord Haraway's Town or Fairmarket to expand. Throughout the centuries, the Riverlands have been a battleground witnessing both glory and tragedy. One key reason for this is the absence of natural boundaries to deter invasion from outsiders. With the waters of the Trident offering prime conditions for settlement, the region is an obvious target for conquest, resulting in its fertile lands becoming a veritable hub for conflict. The Riverlands in the Age of the First Men. Before the Andals arrived in Westeros, the Riverlands were home to numerous petty kingdoms ruled over by the First Men. Their histories, often obscured by myths and songs, have been largely forgotten. Their script, written in runes, having lost its meaning even to the wisest among men of the Citadel. Some legendary figures like Artos the Strong, Florian the Fool, Ninefinger Jack, Shara the Witch Queen, and the Green King of the God's Eye are remembered in colorful tales. But the historical accuracy of these figures remains a subject of debate among scholars. The first men were dominant in Westeros for many centuries, and though they ruled the Riverlands, the details of their reign are often shrouded in mystery. What is clear is that they were deeply connected to the old gods and the children of the forest who protected their sacred weirwood trees. However, when the Andals arrived in Westeros, they brought a different faith and sought to eradicate the old gods. This led to conflicts with the First Men and the destruction of many of the weirwood groves. High Heart, a hill crowned by giant weirwoods, was particularly significant to the First Men. It was not only revered by them, but also served as a dwelling place for the children of the forest and their greenseers. When the Andal King Eric the Kinslayer threatened the grove, Legend tells of the children calling upon clouds of ravens and armies of wolves to defend it. The Andal's steel axes, however, proved formidable, leading them to slaughter both greenseers, beasts and first men alike. They raised beside the High Heart a hill of corpses half its size, or so the singers would have us believe, at least. The Andal arrival and their conquest of the Riverlands the arrival of the Andals in Westeros marked a pivotal turning point in the history of the region. After sweeping through the Vale, these eastern conquerors made their way to the Riverlands by sailing their longships up the Trident and its branches. In those days, the Andals fought under chieftains, who were later anointed as kings by the Septons. They gradually encroached upon the territories of the many petty kings of the Riverlands, leading to numerous battles and conflicts. These Andal invaders of Westeros were devout followers of the Faith of the Seven, and they regarded the old gods of the First Men and the Children of the Forest as little more than demons. This zealous attitude led to the desecration of countless weirwood groves. The invaders sought to destroy all of the ancient white trees, even hacking out their carved faces. The seven-pointed star of the Faith was ubiquitous among the Andals, adorning their shields, banners, surcoats, and even inscribed into their flesh. The Andals played such a pivotal role in shaping the fate of the region that some maesters jest its history only truly began with their invasion. The Andal conquest of the Riverlands saw numerous battles and conflicts which were often recorded in the songs of the era. Battles included the fall of Maidenpool, the Widow's Ford, 
and the legendary clash in the White Wood, where supposedly the children of the forest emerged from beneath a hollow hill to send hundreds of wolves against an Andal camp, tearing apart scores of men beneath the light of a crescent moon. Another account is the Great Battle of Bitter River, in which the sworn enemies of houses Bracken and Blackwood put aside their quarrels and joined forces against the invaders. Together, they put up a valiant defense, yet in the end, they proved to be no match for the 777 Andal Knights that bore the seven-pointed star of their faith. Despite the heroic efforts of the First Men, the military dominance of the Andals and their widespread religious fervor was beginning to reshape the political and religious landscape of the Riverlands. Their coming marked the end of the First Men's hold over the region, and thus the history of the Riverlands became forever intertwined with the arrival of the Andals. The Fall of the First Men from the day the Andals landed in Westeros, they sought to assert dominance and reshape the region according to their beliefs and traditions. However, at the same time, notable river kings arose to contest them in fierce battles, seeking to maintain control over their land. One of the most prominent of these river kings was Tristopher IV of House Mud, known as the Hammer of Justice. Tristopher ruled from the formidable castle of Oldstones perched atop a hill near the banks of the Blue Fork. Legends speak of his remarkable martial prowess, of how he supposedly fought a hundred battles against the invaders and won 99 of them. His legendary reign, however, ended in the hundredth battle, where he rode against an alliance of seven Andal kings. Before the Muds, there were other powerful dynasties that ruled the Riverlands, such as the Fishers, the Blackwoods and the Brackens. Nevertheless, the Muds succeeded in unifying more of the Riverlands than their predecessors, becoming one of the most influential River King dynasties in the region's history. The Hammer of Justice was followed by his son, Tristopher V, also known as Tristopher the Last. Unfortunately, Tristopher the Last was unable to halt the Andal advance, nor could he maintain unity among his subjects. Ultimately, both King Tristopher and the Castle of Oldstones were brought down by the Andal challengers. This ushered in a tumultuous period in the Riverlands' history. Andal kings began intermarrying with the remaining First Men nobility to strengthen their hold upon the lands and butchered those who refused to bend the knee. The blood of the last kings of the First Men had barely dried before these new kings began to war upon each other for dominance. Many men dubbed themselves King of the Rivers and Hills or King of the Trident, but centuries had to pass before any of these warlords held sway over enough of the Riverlands to be worthy of such titles. The Rise and Fall of House Justman The first of the Andal kings was a bastard, born of a tryst between the two enemy houses of Bracken and Blackwood. Even though he was despised by all, the boy turned out to be the greatest warrior of his age. Soon, men were naming him Sir Benedict the Bold. Emerging center stage upon the war-torn theater of the Riverlands, his prowess in battle awarded him the great feat of securing the support of the houses of both his mother as well as his father. Not long after, other river lords bent the knee and came to fight under his banners as well. Still, it required more than 30 years for him to cast down the last petty king, and only then did he don a crown himself. As a king, the man became known as Benedict the Just, a name he favored so well, he took on Just Man as the name of his house. For 23 years, he reigned and extended his rule as far as Maidenpool and the Neck. His son Benedict, second of his name, added Duskendale, Rosby, and the mouth of the Blackwater into the fold. And so it came to be that the first Andal king asserted his rule upon the Riverlands. For three centuries, House Justman held sway over the region, with successive monarchs continuing to consolidate their power. The Justman dynasty is an example of the rise of new houses in Westeros, each contributing to the ever-evolving political landscape of the region. However, the rule of House Justman eventually met a tragic end when Cord Hor, the king of the Iron Islands, murdered the sons of King Bernard II, who were held captive in Pike. Seeking vengeance, King Bernard II waged a hopeless war against the Ironborn, leading to his death upon the field and resulting in the ultimate fall of House Justman. 
These events marked the beginning of yet another period of anarchy and bloodshed. A period where various river lords and noble houses vied for dominance in the absence of a strong central authority to keep them aligned. Stay tuned for the next bloody chapter in our volume on the much contested grounds of the Riverlands. Like and subscribe for more videos and we'll see you on our next journey.